Welcome, I'm Sid. Today we will compare different color spaces and I'll give you 3 reasons why you should be using the Profoto RGB color space in Photoshop. Let's start by understanding what is a color space. Simply put, a color space accurately represents the complete range of colors that can be contained within it. Think of it as a container with a certain amount of various colors. This entire range of colors is termed as a color gamut or simply gamut. The human eye has a certain gamut which is a tiny section of the electromagnetic spectrum called visible light. The visible light spectrum when expanded on a two-dimensional graph looks like this chromaticity diagram called CIE 1931XY which is one of the earliest color space created way back in 1931. So the horseshoe shaped diagram shows us the range of colors visible to humans and anything outside this color space is not visible to us and is considered out of gamut for the human eye. Just like the human vision, most devices have a gamut of colors that they can either print or display. Because all these devices have a different gamut, Microsoft and HP together in the year 1996 created a standard RGB color space popularly known as sRGB to help us ensure color consistency when used on different monitors, inkjet printers and the internet. sRGB is still the only color space we use on the web today. When it comes to offset printing press, their inks can't produce the bright and vibrant colors like a backlit display. So a smaller color gamut has to be used based on a subtractive color model called CMYK. You can learn more about RGB and CMYK and additive and subtractive colors in the video linked above. Now as you can see, the sRGB color space can't reproduce the entire color gamut of the CMYK color space. Hence the Adobe RGB color space was created by Adobe in 1998 which is much larger than sRGB and it covers the entire CMYK color gamut. Another popular color space used in photography is the Profoto RGB, the largest digital color space that was created by Kodak to show all the possible colors in the ektachrome film. So the first thing you notice when you see all these different RGB color spaces is how small the sRGB color space is in comparison. So why would all the devices and web browsers use the smallest color profile? The reason is because there is a gamut limitation with different devices. So the standard color gamut has to be small enough to fit in all of them. And sRGB can be handled easily by a 20 year old desktop monitor or the latest smartphone. Most monitors generally use 8 bits per channel, meaning the intensities of red, green and blue is expressed with an 8-bit value in each pixel. That is 256 shades of red, 256 shades of green and 256 shades of blue in each pixel. As you might have seen in Photoshop info panel, each color has its own coordinates within the color space with RGB values ranging from 0 to 255 which in total is 256 colors per channel. So every color that you could possibly think of has its own coordinates within the color space. For example, the RGB values of the corner points of the sRGB triangle are defined. So here like in Photoshop, the purest green point value is red 0, green 255 and blue 0. And these coordinates or RGB values are the same for all RGB color spaces with 8 bits per channel. So even though Adobe RGB has a slightly wider gamut than sRGB, it is still an RGB color model. So its purest green point here will also be red 0, green 255 and blue 0. But as you can see, it's a completely different green compared to that in the sRGB color space. Now here's the interesting part. When you consider the same purest green point coordinates of Profoto RGB which is also 0 to 55 0, you will notice that it is located outside the gamut of the human eye. The out of gamut hue is still green. But what you can't see is the saturation or vibrancy of the green color. So Profoto RGB and Adobe RGB color space do not have more hues than sRGB. They simply have more saturated tint, shades and tones, especially in the green and the blue side. Again, if you're confused with these terms, I highly recommend the video on color theory linked above. Now let's move on to color profiles. You might have noticed that cameras usually have an sRGB and Adobe RGB color space option available. Now these settings strictly apply to a JPEG file. If you shoot RAW, then these settings don't matter. This is because RAW images don't have any color space. It is just RAW data. Lightroom and Camera Raw Converter use a mixture of something similar to the Profoto RGB for processing but an sRGB for display. Insiders call the Lightroom color space as Melissa RGB, named after one of the Lightroom team members. 
At no point the color values are altered when you edit the raw photo. Color space has to be assigned to a raw image during the raw conversion. When your raw converter writes out the file, it simply tags the color space by embedding a color profile in its metadata. Color profiles, also known as ICC profiles or ICM profiles, contain the color mapping values of a color space. Think of them as presets of a particular color space. When you open an image in Photoshop, it will map the colors according to the profile assigned during the raw conversion. This also means that we can remap the colors anytime in Photoshop. Now that you understand color spaces, their gamuts and color profiles, the big question, which color space should you use? If you shoot in RAW and edit exclusively within your RAW editing software, simply convert to sRGB for web publishing or Adobe RGB for printing files. If you shoot RAW and edit the converted photo with Photoshop, convert in 16-bit ProPhoto RGB. Now, why ProPhoto? I'll give you three reasons. First of all, RAW photos often contain colors outside of both sRGB and Adobe RGB color spaces, especially in the high saturation and shadow regions. ProPhoto RGB ensures that whatever the actual saturation an image may have remains unclipped. Of course, if your image doesn't have those colors, you won't see much of a difference. Second, when you're retouching, you are compressing and pushing all the RGB values around in the image. So the more color data you have, the better your results are going to be. Think of ProPhoto RGB as a working space or a retouching sandbox inside Photoshop. And when you're done, make the final conversions with rendering intent set at perceptual, as it is the best option for converting from a larger color space to a smaller one. Third, these days, when it comes to inkjet printing, much has changed from the past. Today, we have wide gamut high-end printers from Epson and Canon, which have up to 12 inks, which exceeds Adobe RGB in some areas. The advantages of ProPhoto RGB is that it's the only color space that can contain all the colors your image can capture in RAW and all the colors that today's wide gamut printers can print. But here are some things that you have to keep in mind while working with ProPhoto RGB. Just remember that you really don't want to pass a ProPhoto RGB file off to others who don't understand color management. Because as great as ProPhoto may sound, there are no wide gamut monitors on the market which display ProPhoto RGB. For this reason, many professionals prefer working in Adobe RGB color space as you will find a monitor that supports up to 99% Adobe RGB, which is fine. Photography is all about seeing, so I encourage you to try working in ProPhoto RGB and see for yourself whether it fits your needs. So let me know in the comments which color space do you use in Photoshop and what kind of photography do you do. As always, thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.